Get this guy out of here. Get him, like, what the hell are you doing? Get Mike McCarthy out of here. I'm tired of talking about it. Uh, straight to the action. There's a lot going on. Try to lock these predictions down, right? Call me John. I'm going to talk to Jared because he might keep me calm. Had my top pick for this week, but he bombed. Caleb said he had a weak week, but he's strong. Jonathan said he repeat, now it's on. In love with the game, who you got? Can I wait? Drop by by the door. Come and watch. It's the bait. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Door and Debate podcast, and welcome to our week eight episode. We are going to be debriefing after that crazy week eight. Uh, crazy National Tight Ends Day goes crazy. What's? I mean, how in the world? The tight ends were dead this year. Like through through week one to week eight, they were they were dead. And all of a sudden, National Tight Ends Day comes along, and they just explode, and they go off for as many touchdowns as, as they've ever had. I think there was a stat on Red yeah. Zone. They said that, right? Yep. Most touchdowns by tight ends in a single day in NFL history. I wish I had known that before I dropped at Pitts. Oh. Oh, my gosh. That's tough. I know. I picked um, Evan Engram as a weekly pick on my live show on Sunday, and he had a touchdown in like 13.6 fantasy points, but mm-hmm. I could have picked Kate Otten, who got like 29. Any any other week, you'd be like, oh my God, a tight end got 13 points. That's amazing. I would take yeah. that any day. And then you realize- <laughs> this week, it's the worst. Yeah, you realize he was like 12th out of the top 13 tight yeah. ends. Like literally, Brock Bowers got 11 fantasy points, and he was tight end 18. Like other any other week you're like eleven? Oh hell yeah, I'll take eleven. You think like the offensive coordinators are like go like before the game, they just go up to the tight end and be like, Hey, get get ready for a couple passes in the end zone. Like Dude, yeah. no, it I'm a hundred percent sure like it's a talking point on every team like this yeah. past week. Like they, they definitely joke about it, but then they're like, No, actually we're gonna like you're we're, we're not gonna like feed you, but we we're you're gonna be our first read like a, a few times towards like the end. Zone. It's a fake holiday. George Kittle <laughs> just made it up. There's no yeah. like, there's no rhyme or reason. Well, National Tight Ends Day was only the beginning. We had a hell mary. Uh, we had oh some upsets. My gosh. Uh, we have we have a lot to get to. We got Anthony Richardson to to start it off. Jaden Daniels hell mary. The Cowboys losing, and pe- potentially the Ravens lost to the Browns. That was probably the biggest upset of the week. Let's start off with Anthony Richardson. Uh, now, if you don't know, I, I made a TikTok about it about an hour ago, but the it's just weird. It's I've never encountered something like this. Anthony Richardson, quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts, is making headlines because he tapped out of the game against the Texans. It's a divisional game. They have a chance at, at first place. Um, it was the third quarter. I'll just paint the picture. Third quarter, they're down 10. And it's second and goal. He runs to try and get a first down, gets stopped at the line of scrimmage, taps his helmet, indicating that he needs a substitution. So they sub him out for Joe Flacco. They hand it off. They get like two yards and they kick and they were down 10 at the time. Well, next day you see Pat McAfee, Shannon Sharp. They're all talking, saying, you know, I played football for forever, whatever. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen (laughs) a quarterback sub himself out of a game, let alone a divisional game, a game where you're down. And it was third and goal. It's not like it was, you know, first and or second and 30. And he's like, oh, I got to get out of here. He could have lied and said he got injured, but he didn't. He said, I tapped my helmet and I got tired because I was running a lot that whole time uh, in the plays leading up to that. So I wanted to sit that one out. Um, I've never seen anything like it. I looked at the plays and there was a there was an injury timeout. Jonathan Taylor got him to the goal line. He didn't even do that. He he literally didn't do any running. I don't know why he's complaining. He max ran like 10 yards the whole freaking drive. And he's <laughs> complaining like this. So uh Jonathan, I feel like you have a lot to say about this. Cause you I mean you're yeah. you're from Texas. 
Exactly. Yeah. You said the keyword Texas. I can tell you this guy was not a Texas product. That nah, I can tell you. Heck he was no. not a Texas product. I'm gonna look no, at no way. No, this is like soft California level type stuff. Yeah, exactly. Stuff. This is soft, real soft. Through the heat, the two days, you know, the, the scorching sun. Nobody, like during an actual game, nobody does this really. Um, I haven't seen a player do it in the actual game. In um, even high school, maybe in middle school and your Pee Wee, okay, maybe. But no, that's like, if you're actually, you know, prideful or you're very proud of that starting position, you don't want to, you know, to lose that starting position. You don't, want to, you don't want anybody else to get playing time. You want to get all the reps. That's number one. Number two, like you said, I didn't watch any of the analysis, but I've never, I've definitely never, even in Pee Wee, everything, I've never seen a quarterback <laughs> do that. Never. They're supposed to be the leaders. They're supposed to be the people that the whole team looks up to. They don't show any. They don't show when they're tired or any or anything. Even in off-season workouts or anything, they're always that standard that you look up to. Quarterbacks are supposed to be like that. They're, they're the leader. It's the hardest position, and they they show you they earn it. <sighs> I think they rushed Anthony Richardson to start in the league. Okay, a true person that fought for that position, he wouldn't be acting like this. Look at. Mahomes, look at Brady, look at Tony Romo. That's why they ended up being pretty good, okay? They fought for those positions. They, the quarterback got injured, and they had an opportunity to, to showcase their talents, and that's what happened. They were hungry for it. This guy's not hungry. There's a, a famous motivational speaker that says this. Guys, if you want to be successful as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. This guy literally took a timeout or literally got out of the game so he could catch his breath. He don't want to be great. He's not hungry for it. Okay? Th- that, that's a perfect quote for this scenario. It's kind of it symbolizes that this guy isn't hungry. We've mm-hmm. seen enough. This guy's not hungry. He was, and it's not his fault. Oh, I guess it is his fault, but it, I blame more of the managers. I blame more of the coaches for putting him in, putting him in a starting position too early because he's not hungry. He, he basically was handed this uh, you know, position. And anytime you give a man something he doesn't earn, you cheapen him, and I'm afraid that right now they've cheapened Anthony Richardson because he's not hungry. He's like, oh, yeah, I was, I was tired. You were tired? Imagine being at a big high school, like, like uh, Kyle Murray's high school, Allen, and the quarterback saying, oh, I'm tired. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch my, my breath. The coach is just they're going to look at him and say, okay, next guy up. That, yeah. that quarterback's not coming back in the yeah, game. Yeah, you, you might not get back in the <laughs> he's game. Not coming back in the, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They handed this guy the position. He's not hungry, and that's that's – Probably why they've been second this year. The quarterback himself, the leader, the, the the so-called leader of the team, he doesn't want it as bad. He doesn't want. He doesn't. He wants to breathe. See what I'm saying? He wants to breathe. So, yeah, uh, yeah. it was I, literally. It's, it's sad. Yeah, literally, exactly. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Jonathan. Like, I know a lot of people are probably seeing this all over the news, and people maybe that just start watching football. Like, wow, why are they making such a big deal out of this? He only came out for one play, but. Like you said, Jonathan, leaders, franchise quarterbacks, you you don't do this. And this is a big thing because you can tell that he's at least a year away from being like a leader of this team. He's He's got time. And, and I like what you said about the coaches because the fact that Joe Flacco came in and did so well, it almost seems like the coaches messed up by saying like, yeah, Richardson, you're our starting quarterback when you come back. Like, yeah. Why? Why? Yeah, he is the franchise guy, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, Flacco's clearly playing better. And I'm going to tell you guys, I think Flacco's going to be the starting quarterback for more of the rest of the season than Richardson. It's only week, we're going into week nine. There's nine games left. I think that Flacco will, will start at least five of those games. Uh, yeah. Because if you're the coaches, you're going to start looking really, really stupid if you continue to put this guy out there and continue to lose. Let me give you guys a stat that's so interesting and so crazy i can't even believe that it's true but anthony richardson has started five games and he's finished five games right in those five games four of them he has 10 or fewer completions that's insane 10 or fewer completions his completion percentage is under 30 percent last game and the game before that guys daniel jones doesn't even have a game under 14 completions this season he has four of his five starts and finishes of a game with 10 or less this guy cannot – Pittman targeted six times, caught one pass for 15 yards. This guy clearly cannot do what he needs to do to win games. They are so lucky that Jonathan Taylor is back because if it wasn't for Jonathan Taylor, that game would have been a blowout. And if it wasn't for Jonathan Taylor this upcoming week, it would be a blowout again. And I think Flacco is going to start this week, honestly. 
Like this is this guy is astronomically bad right now, and he's got to be sat. You got to teach this guy a lesson. Like this, it's getting really bad. Yeah, yeah. What did he? What, what did he end up like? What was his um, attempts? Because the last time I saw was ten he, of thirty four. So ten of thirty two was okay. this past week. The week before, ten of twenty four, under fifty percent. The bad. start before that, ten of twenty. That's fifty yeah. percent. The start before that, seventeen of thirty four. That's fifty percent. The start before that, nine of nineteen. That's under fifty percent. He hasn't had a game better than fifty percent completion. You're literally just flipping a coin every time he, he drops has, back. He has the worst completion percentage of a quarterback since 2014. And the, the list on this is like Deshaun Kaiser is on this list. Uh, Mike Glennon is on this <laughs> list. Drew Stanton is on this list. David Blau is on this list. Like, yeah, like I don't under I don't know people don't understand how big this is. Like if you have this guy in your dynasty team on fantasy, like you got to start looking elsewhere. He's not going to be fantasy relevant for at least another year and a half. I would say all of next season he's still going to be struggling. Like you you got to you got to find other options if you're the Colts at this point. And you have the best backup in the league, so use him. That's what's crazy is if I'm Anthony Richardson, I don't believe that I've won this starting job. Like Jonathan <laughs> said, I feel like it was given to him. And, right, but and how, but if, but if he felt like if he felt like it was all oh, it was just given to me or whatever, like you do, then why would he come out of the game? Not, He's not scared. I mean, Jonathan said Jonathan said it. He's not scared. Literally, if yeah, Flacco came in and he throws a freaking so it was third and goal, but they were backed up because of penalties, so they were really on like the twenty five. If Flacco comes in third and goal, slings a pass to Josh Downs for a touchdown, like, how can you, like, sit with yourself and be like, wow, I just came out of the game because I was tired. I gave another man an opportunity, and he took the opportunity while I sat down and caught my breath. Like, and it forced – the Colts didn't even try. They just forced the Colts' hand and the coaches to just run it. Because I guess Flacco could just go in and throw a dart, but they were like, oh, our starting quarterback is out. So they literally just handed it off to, to Taylor for two yards, and they got a field goal. It doesn't even take any effort to just put your hand out and give the right. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Or to even try. Like, call he, Audible if you're tired. Say call Hey, you're going to run the ball. I'm tired. And you just hand him the ball. Like, come on, bro. He literally was like, oh, there. there's, no, there's no chance we can score a touchdown, so I'm just going to, like, walk off, and Flacco can hand the ball off. Like, now nah, that that's bad. That's really bad. And it shows how bad it is when former NFL players are like, I've never seen this before in my entire life. Jonathan, you in high school, even in high school, never seen it before. Pee Wee, a quarterback. I mean, I've never even in like when I've played sports growing up, like I like I played deck hockey, I played flag football and I played like soccer and stuff like you want to be out there. Was, yeah, you want to be out there. Like, if yeah. it's late in the game, I do, I you know how many times I was like dead tired, and Jonathan, I'm sure you were too. Like, you do not come out of the game. I don't care if I'm like like literally half my speed. I still believe that I'm one of the best players out there, and I'm going to make a difference. Yeah, I talked yeah. about in the TikTok, like, because we're we're a little bit older, so we remember like Philip Rivers tearing his ACL in, in a playoff game and playing through it, then. Uh, Matthew Stafford, that video of him where he like screws up his shoulder, limps off the field. Then they realize that they're going to start doing the play again. And he's like, oh, I got to be out there. And he literally like, can't even raise his shoulder, <laughs> runs back on. Next play, throws the game-winning touchdown to Calvin Johnson, limps off with his shoulder injury. And then even two years ago, uh, we saw Patrick Mahomes against the Jags in the playoffs. And they, they're telling him, hey, we got to get x-rays on your ankle. And he's like, no, no, I'm not coming out. I'm not coming out of this game. And they're like, we just need to do it for precaution. Like, we need to look at your ankle. And he's like, no, I'm not doing it. Stuff. And they force him. Yeah, yeah he, he threw down. his coat it, down. That's a guy that's hungry. Yeah, he was, that's a guy that wants to stay on the field. That's what you want as a exactly. quarterback. Exactly. That's what you want in your quarterback. And this guy, oh, I was tired. Let's move on to the play of the week. Jaden Daniels, Hail Mary. Commanders win on a Hail Mary to Noah Brown. Who was it? It was Noah Brown. It was Noah Brown that caught it. Um, Pretty insane throw. I mean, the guy has one of the best. I think he's five for five on 50-plus passes. 
So his accuracy is already amazing. <laughs> and I don't know if he did it on purpose, but we're going to say he did it on purpose. Um, both teams played really bad, to be honest. It was a low, oh, yeah. it was a low scoring game. Nothing crazy was happening um, until that very end. And it's a big win because Jaden Daniels beat Caleb Williams, the number one pick. So the number two faced the number one. And I was telling John, I'm like, hey, whoever wins this head to head may have a little bit of an edge on the rookie of the year. And I think Jaden Daniels might have secured that rookie of the year beating Caleb Williams and having that such an iconic, some may say Heisman moment uh, against. It's unfortunate. Yeah. It's unfortunate because. That's going to be the headline. Caleb Williams gets beat by Jaden Daniels. But, like, that's why you saw Caleb Williams, like, he's so pissed at the end of the game because he knows that's going to be the headline when, like, it, it's actually bigger than that. It's a team game. Um, he did the best he could, and his defense gave up a stupid play. You saw that defensive back taunting the the crowd. I don't know if y'all saw the video. He was taunting the crowd and stuff and all that. Yeah. And the play was already going on. And then, like, he, was, I think that was basically his responsibility to guard that guy or guard that area or whatever. And that, I think that's why they lost. Okay. I mean, he that was, was the one that ended up. He was the one that ended up coming over and getting a hand on it. Um, so <laughs> oh, it wasn't necessarily. Yeah. yeah, so he wasn't necessarily late, but he was definitely distracted. And I think Eberflu said something. I didn't see what he said, but he definitely addressed that because somebody asked him about it. Mm-hmm. And he, I think he said like, "Oh, you got to focus on." He said something about, "Oh, you got to focus on the play" or something like that. Yeah. So I'm sure that'll be a talking point. And yeah, yeah it is a little unfortunate because it is a team game, Jonathan. But at the same time, I thought the Bears were going to have a lot more success and you picked yeah. them as an upset and i, I was did. like that's pretty good upset because the bears had a bye last week john bears john literally john literally was like wow jonathan went two and oh this week <laughs> and in the lock <laughs> and upset you're like wow he yeah. went two and oh and then it happened and we're like oh my gosh yeah Dude, i mean literally, Jaden daniels but, was questionable but he had 22 yeah. points like yeah, yeah so. he played through it but at the same time like caleb williams he had some good plays but he was only he only had ten completions, just like Anthony Richardson. Like yeah. he was ten of twenty four yeah. and one hundred and thirty one yeah. passing yards, coming off a bye. Like that was a little disappointing. I like Caleb Williams, and the Bears have been good so far, but that was disappointing. It was disappointing. And um, look, Jaden Daniels at this point, we got to know like this guy has the it factor. Okay, he's a winner. Yeah, this guy is a winner, and so you got to be happy if you're a Commanders fan. Um, you've been waiting for this for years. Now you finally got your franchise quarterback somebody that wants to win, somebody that's hungry. He's probably, honestly, he's most likely not 100%. He's probably like 75%, but he still went out there and played, and he did well. Um, yeah, this guy's a winner. So that's something to keep your head high on, um, other than the win for Commanders. Uh, they're probably number one in the division right now, I, I, I'd, I'd have to assume. Yeah, they still are. Five uh, yeah, and so, two. Yeah, it's been a Six while and since two. that's happened. Yeah, so. Six and two for the Commanders. Yeah, um, but I agree with Jared. I mean, this is probably, he's probably going to win the record of the year. He's done, he's just, He's just done too yeah. much to not. Well, win it. it was it was a big moment for Caleb Williams, like John said, coming off a bye to go into Washington. If he plays the game of his life now, then the narrative shifts to oh, Jaden Daniels is running away with this. To wow, Caleb Williams came into Washington into Jaden Daniels house and played lights out and came out with a dub. But instead, even if they won, he didn't play great. Even the, even a lot of Bears fans were like, we didn't deserve to win that game in the first place. Like they played awful. They handed the ball off to an offensive lineman on the goal line and, f- yeah, and he like fumbled and it. And he fumbled it. Uh, what do yeah, you, that was terrible. Like that's too cocky. Maybe if you're up a touchdown, <laughs> maybe try it, but come on. Like, I, and I'm not sold on this bears coaching staff at all. Um, so I'm not going to blame Caleb Williams or anything, but Hey, <laughs> Jaden Daniels throws for over 300 yards he rushed for 52, threw a touchdown, no turnovers. He played like how he how he should play, um, and then ends up getting you know the dub. But mm-hmm. uh, I guess going forward, where do you see the Bears team going from here? They have an interesting. I'm going to look up their schedule. They have uh, the Cardinals, then they have the Patriots. Yeah, but then after those two games, their schedule gets insane. Well, that, then you get into division. <laughs> 
Your division yeah, is they haven't the really, hardest. They haven't really played. No, they literally haven't played anybody in the division. Division. They go after the Patriots and after Cardinals and then Patriots. They go Packers, Vikings, Lions, 49ers, Vikings, Lions, Seahawks, Packers. <laughs> like, good He's luck. Got, yeah, they're not gonna. Seeing, they're not gonna make it out of this. And Caleb Williams has to show up at some point. Jaden Daniels has been showing up week after week. He Caleb Williams showed up in London, and then they took the bye week. And you thought he would—he was progressing like further and further. Better, and yeah. Then yeah. he, then this game just didn't—it didn't show. Um, I think. I mean, I think he'll—he'll he'll improve throughout the season. But yeah, I mean, the schedule's too tough. I, think, I don't think the team will. Unfortunately, it's going to be tough for the team to make the playoffs because it's just too tough. But uh, I think they. Yeah, could I mean, he may—he may, he may show some splashes of greatness towards the end. I think they could still make it. I am a little worried about uh, the receiving core. Like, they're not as dominant as I thought. And I haven't watched enough of the bears to figure out if Caleb Williams is just not missing him or if it's the coaching yeah. or if they're just not playing well, I'd have yeah, to really look, but it's going it, to be tough because Vikings uh, Packers is going to be tough for them to make it. Yeah. Uh, and for the commanders, we're going to talk about our next team, the Cowboys. So we got commanders in first place. Eagles are in second place. Cowboys in third. I mean, as it stands, uh, the commanders are yeah it's a two man and, race at this point yeah and let's let's get in <laughs> let's get into that unfortunate it's unfortunate oh, it, it really is i but. we we all knew that it was we knew it was going to be eagles or commanders because cowboys won the division last year so if we go to the cowboys <sighs> can the cowboys turn things around guys is it possible? They lost to the 49ers again. Nothing new. Um, the standings read as follows. Commanders at 6 and 2, Eagles at 5 and 2, Cowboys at 3 and 4, Giants 2 and 5, about to be 2 and 6. So, Cowboys 3 and 4, first place is 6 and 2. Let's look at the Cowboys schedule, shall we? Oh boy. Oh gosh. Oh my goodness. All right. Oh gosh. The next So, I mean, we have It doesn't get easier. We have at Atlanta Falcons could potentially win that. Then you have the Eagles at home, you have the Texans at home, you're in Washington, then you have the Giants, Bengals, a bunch of other teams, but right off the bat that four team stretch, Falcons, Eagles, Texans, Commanders. Jonathan, you've watched this team very closely. You're a huge fan. Do you think they can get out of this rut that they've dug themselves? I think it's possible. Anything is possible in sports. But they need to make smart decisions. Number one, the running game. They need to find a, a good free agent running back or something and pick somebody up or trade for someone. Because at this juncture, the running backs suck. The running game is terrible. And that's what's causing all this issue on offense. Dak Prescott, he's been looking awful. And I don't blame it totally on him because the rushing attack is not there. So they all know that, hey, the only way to score points is by throwing the ball. And, yeah, I mean, it's easy to plan against that. I will say, though, you guys are very good at trying to hide what y'all said in the beginning of the season. 49ers are Super Bowl Brown. 49ers are Super Bowl Brown. Y'all said that, okay? Y'all said that. I did. I did. I okay. still believe it. Well, no, no. The Cowboys, they, they were looking awful yesterday, but they still found a way to – they kept it like within six points or something. Well, That's not a Super Bowl come, team. They let them come back. No. Oh, let... <laughs> That's not a Super Bowl team. Guys, it's been Dude, week they, after week. They, what are you, you going to wake do? up? They were up by 20. Oh, I mean, stop, just stop let CD Lamb do whatever he wants. No, it's fine. It's yeah, all, it was kind of garbage time. They were trying to give no, him no, no, no. <laughs> It was garbage time, huh? You guys are funny. Are you trying to victory lap a win? Yeah. No, yeah, no, no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What, you, what are you I, happy I, I was about? Know, I know because I was looking at it. I was like, man, these John and uh, – I think it was all three, y'all. John, Caleb, and John said – this was a Super Bowl bound team. Still no, is. Still is. Not dude, a Super Bowl they didn't team. have they didn't have CMC uh, and they still uh, beat you dude, guys. Dude, they still C- won. Right, dude, in terms of this rest of the season, you can okay. forget about you can forget about CMC. He's not gonna be the same. Dude, he's, he's coming back. back. No, he's not gonna be the same. And he Jordan, back. Jordan Mason, their nah, starting running back. Jordan got Mason hurt. was out. And they Jordan still Mason were up was out. Injury issues. 
They're not going to be fully exactly. 100%. Yeah, and how did they still win? Well, the point is, we're talking that's about this. Coaching. Well, that's coaching. Okay, we're talking about this here though. They're not going to be Super Bowl bound because of what you just said. CMC, even if he does come back, he's not going to be the same. Jordan Mason, he's banged up now. He's never going to be hundred percent until the season ends. Okay. Uh, uh, they've had a lot of injury issues and stuff. That's not an excuse. Every every team faces injury issues. Okay. They are not Super Bowl bound. Brock Purdy, he's not as great as you guys thought he was. Right. You See, guys just saying? lost. You guys were coming off yeah, a I'm bye. Confused. How'd you lose? No, 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 no. I'm telling you. How'd you I'm, lose? I'm telling you why we lost. I'm telling you why we lost. Number one, I'm running attack. We have old running backs back there. Dalvin Cook, you know, they're having fun in the back, like grandpas, you know. <laughs> yeah, Dalvin Cook, Ezekiel Elliott. We suck on, on our running game sucks. Yes, your running game is so your biggest the, problem. Yeah, yeah, that's the issue. And so when, if your running game sucks, then you're not gonna, it's going to be tough to win because everyone else has so to So do you. something about it. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Cowboys, trade for somebody, make a move if you want to win now. Uh, I don't know what Jerry Jones, he always likes to play little games. That's the secret. Everybody knows what the issue is. But yet, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy because yet... We still found a way to keep, keep it close. We almost won the game. Honestly, we could have won that game. It was like no. this. 49ers aren't a Super Bowl team. That's what I wanted to say. Number two. <laughs> I've said this and I've said, I'll say it again. It is the coaching. Coaching. Get him out of here. Get Mike McCarthy <laughs> out of here. I'm tired of watching the games like this. <laughs> what, 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 what? Oh, it was like, oh, I remember watching a third and five and they ran the ball. I thought I was like, oh, maybe they're going for it on fourth down, but that's kind of weird because they're on like their own twenty or thirty. But let's see, they punted it. How stupid do you have to be to go like run the ball on third and five? Like, what are you doing? Get this guy out of here. Get him. Like, what the hell are you doing? Get Mike McCarthy out of here. I'm tired of talking about it. <laughs> that's what the issue is, guys. That's what the issue is. Get him out. That's what the issue is. Running, running attack, bad coaching. That's it. He he is uh, really hanging on to that one Super Bowl that Aaron Rodgers exactly. basically carried him <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, he really is. That's I mean, I'm a Super Bowl coach. I'm a Super Bowl yeah. coach. Yeah. They bring him into the office, sit him down, and he's like, "Yeah, I got my ring though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want another?" <laughs> I'm gonna th- I'm gonna throw a name out there because the trade deadline is next Thursday. Uh, a guy that potentially lost his job to Tank Bigsby, Travis Etienne. Maybe going to the Cowboys. Okay, okay. They okay, don't really, they don't really like him right now, and he's 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 played okay, but for some reason they like Tank better. He's been going through injuries. Maybe Travis Etienne, a little trade with the Jags, throw him a fifth round pick. Yeah, and honestly, the Jerry Jones got mad last week on a radio show. He knows we made a mistake by not getting Derrick Henry, and he hates being questioned over it. So I mean, that's kind of why he got a little angry. <clears throat> Look at Derrick Henry. The leading rusher, we could have been like we could have been undefeated if we had Derrick Henry. But mm-hmm. Jerry, Jerry's like he doesn't like to make moves. I don't know why he does it, but he doesn't like to make moves. And yeah. so I'm hoping, and I'm hoping he's gonna do something before the trade deadline. If you remember a few years ago, the Cowboys were mid tier. Then they got Amari Cooper. He changed. He changed the season for us. Do something yeah, like I that mean, for running back, please. I mean, look at the Chiefs. They they got Kareem Hunt. When Pacheco went down, they got DeAndre Hopkins. When Rasheed Rice went down, like the Chiefs, they got a pass rusher today. Making moves, yeah, they're making moves. They're making sure their their team's in the right spot, and they're seven and zero. Oh. Yeah, they're going. They're going so, for all. They're going for all the marbles. You know, they're the, going for that three peat. It's going the for pride. It. The pride of Jerry Jones to sit back and be like, because everybody says make moves. So in Jerry Jones' world, he's going to be like. Well, everybody thinks I'm gonna make. I want to make moves, yeah, but he, he must I really seem smart. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna make any moves, and yeah. and then we're gonna still win. And really, you need to make moves. Yeah. I mean, your rushing sucks. The defense is struggling without Mika Parsons. You need him back. Deron mm-hmm. Bland has been out. You, you need him back. Diggs doesn't do shit anymore. Yeah, yeah, he's lost. And he was like <laughs> heck, heckling a reporter. In the yeah, exactly. Tunnel. I saw that. He's like, I'm happy to discuss this more. He's like, let's let's discuss these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it's so bad. Dude, they're they're in a bad state right now. I'm telling you, this team's cooked. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. I agree. Until they make moves, yeah, it's cooked. It's cooked. I, I don't even think I don't even think a running back could could save them now. You're just uh, grabbing at straws. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. I think a running back could save them. That could. All you need is one key piece that changes the game. With Mark Cooper, that's what happened a few years ago. I think the same thing could happen. Or change the coach. Honestly, that's a stupid. That would, that would probably be a stupid thing to do. Yeah. Don't do what the Jets did. Look at the Jets. Yeah, they're they gonna just, lose the rest of the games. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, for the outlook, do you think wild card? Do you think 
division still in play, or are you just hoping wild no. card? Wild card at this point. Okay. Wild no, card. they're not even going to make the playoffs. It's uh, over. I'll say wild card. They, they, have, they, they, they have no chance. No, who do you, okay, no who do you think has a better chance to make the playoffs, 49ers or Cowboys? It's a close one. We're, you saw yesterday. No, like, it's, it's, <laughs> no, no, it's no, not. No, no, it's, it's the same. No, we're like what? neck and neck. We're neck what? and neck. Yeah. What? Did, we're like, that's why we're rivals. We're like, ne- we're always the same. Dude, level. what? It's not even close. One we're always the same I was level. Just asking last that, year, I was asking that as a joke. No, we're, yeah, we're, we're the same level. Like last year, we're, like, we're always the same level. That's why we're rivals. Last year, we're the same levels. We could, we could, what do you we, mean rivals? They've beaten you every no, time. That's what it seems like, but believe me. <laughs> <laughs> believe me. They don't want to see us. Wait, Jared, they please don't tell us. me what the, what the record is. They it's don't want to see like the Cowboys. For, I'm telling you, the 49ers don't like seeing the Cowboys. They don't like it. What do you mean? They love it. They win every game. They're like we know like we're each other's kryptonite okay that's not kryptonite. what that word that's means. not a thing that's not what that word means <laughs> no, no. We're, we're each other's worst nightmares no they, 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 they daydream the about you <laughs> they literally yeah. are like i hope we play the cowboys this week oh we do all right free win like they don't even try <laughs> well right now we're basically the same level you saw that yesterday. We're, like, the score was close. We're basically the, 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 problem, Actually, the problem for you is they're in a bad division, so they're going to get the division. They're going to get first. You, you guys are in a tougher division, so it's going to be harder for you. Who's going to get first? Division. 49ers. 49ers. Are they're, you still? I, they're, oh, are you, they're in first right now. Yeah, 49ers are in first. first? Yes. Yeah. Are four, you crazy? Four and four. <laughs> what? Yeah. The Seahawks lost to the Bills. Seahawks, Rams, Cardinals. That that's bullcrap, man. That's not fair. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Look how much games they lost, and there's. We're, 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 I know. Tied. Your division See, is annoying. better. Your division. Oh, that's is better. annoying. So, they shouldn't be there. See what I'm saying? They have it easy. Dude, once McCaffrey comes back, you'll see they'll start winning a lot of games. I, I mean, I hope he's. Good. I, I love watching the guy. I really do, but he's not gonna be the same, John. Not this year. <laughs> he's too banged up. It's been too long. He hasn't ran in a while. He's not in football shape. It's gonna take a while, man. He's not gonna be there. Dang. Okay. Uh. Dang. Let's go to the uh, team that does have Derrick Henry, and we'll go to the Ravens. And the Ravens, right now, they're in second because if the Steelers beat the Giants, they'll be 6-2. and two. The Ravens will be 5-3. and three. So the Steelers will be first in the division. The Ravens lost to the Browns. They blew it. They had the lead. They gave the ball back to the preacher, Jameis Winston. And... <laughs> As he would say, God gave him his gifts to go down and score a touchdown, and they had faith in God, and they God gave him the strength to score and all that stuff, and it worked. It freaking yeah, it worked. worked, and, and he drove the day, down the field. Yeah, and This is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> and waver in the faith, ultimate belief, depend on God. <laughs> you sound just like him. <laughs> dude he's he's actually a good leader yeah, like good you leader. watch him you watch him like his mannerisms and him in the locker room like these i think these guys actually believe it yeah, like dude. they actually want to be with him yeah on this. dude you're like a last from last week he's giving us a lot of chance already last week talking about deshaun watson so i'm gonna lift him up i'm gonna support him because <laughs> <he, I>, uh, <laughs> my mom my mama taught me to never kick a man while he's down, he's down but yeah. to help him up, <laughs> help him up. <laughs> he's so good. He was yeah, doing yeah. a thing in the in the tunnel before the game, and he's huddling around all the quarterbacks, and he's like, "Hey, I want you guys to go out there, play fast, play hard, play smart, and play for the name on your jersey and the name on your helmet." Well, we're the Browns; we don't have a decal on our helmet, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> And, and dude, all the none of those quarterbacks are gonna touch grass. <laughs> He's the only no. one. <laughs> it's amazing. He's telling them to go play hard. <laughs> it's amazing. He, I hope he's a coach one day because his no, his no, press no, conferences, no. his speeches before the game. Dude, are we be should unmatched. get him get him up and get him up in the booth. <laughs> oh my no no, he won't stop talking. <laughs> he's a yapper. <laughs> Can you analyze? Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what the Lord has in store for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, every <laughs> that play right there. He's, every play is going to be just a moment. Can you analyze that play? That run to the right for two yards. <laughs> God gave him the gift to juke left and then move right. Uh, yeah, so they lost to him. <laughs> the Ravens <laughs> lost to him. Uh, no offense to Jameis Winston at all. Uh, But they lost Amari Cooper, their leading receiver. Nick Chubb was nowhere to be found. Um, Is there a level of concern 
for the Ravens at how year after year they always seem to have trouble with the Browns. <laughs> like, yeah, they, the, I mean, guys, I've told you this is this team is not going to the Super Bowl. People keep picking them for the Super Bowl. Ravens, they have, yeah, the Ravens are not, but guys. they always have trouble with the Browns. Well, the thing no, is, guys, but, you guys have to notice this trend across the league. Okay, in divisions, especially for top teams, you pick players that can beat that division rival. For example. Why do you think the Chiefs always have close games with the Raiders and the Broncos and things like that? They are structured to be able to beat Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, and so it's always close. Same thing. Cleveland Browns are structured and built to beat the Ravens, and that's why it's always and, like because the Ravens are the top dog. Close. Exactly. The top dog. And but like it's all about matchups. Football's a game of matchups. In terms of the matchups, the Cleveland Browns match up perfectly with the uh, with the Ravens. Right. But but the Chiefs, majority of the, the league, Chiefs, though, I mean, the Chiefs games with the Raiders are close sometimes and. Mm-hmm. But they always come out winning. <laughs> the Ravens, win. it seems like they, they don't come out winning like 90% of the time, maybe yeah. like 60. Yeah. But like I'm telling you, this Lamar throwing his helmet down at the end of the game. Like, dude, the some, of that, some of this is on you too. Yeah, like, it was him. It was you didn't him. play a perfect game. Like he missed likely on the previous drive, I think, for like an 80-yard touchdown. Yeah, over he the was middle. like wide open at the middle of the field. And that last play, so like, that last play like – who was I going to? Y'all saw the last play, his last yeah. attempt. I mean, come on, man. <clears throat> yeah, so, dude, their schedule, home against the Broncos. They're favored by nine somehow, um, but the Broncos haven't been bad, so that, that'll that probably be close. Then the Bengals, Steelers, Chargers, Eagles. I still think they're overall— so it's not easy. They're over, my screen's frozen again, but they're overall better. <clears throat> like you said, you brought up, John, in the in the live show— like a lot of their DBs were gone. They were they were out. So right. I mean, getting them back will be fine. I mean, it the it's the Browns that's a, Super Bowl. That's a huge, but that's a huge issue. Like they are the number one run defense in the league, but the worst pass defense. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, they did have injuries at corner, but dude, they were missing Marlon Humphrey. But even when he was in, Jamar Chase had 193 yards, two touchdowns. Like. Okay, he's not Humphrey's good, but he's not top ten cornerback. Right. All right, we got to wrap this up. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to the Norm Debate Podcast. If you haven't already, go follow us over on Instagram and on TikTok at Norm Debate Podcast. If you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, we are close to five thousand subscribers, so if you hit that subscribe button, it would mean a lot to us. And as always, guys, we will see you next week for a big surprise next week. So tune in to the podcast. We have a big, big, big surprise, potentially about a trip. Ooh. Tune in next week. We'll see you guys.